Hey everyone, as you can see I have a little brown box here and inside this little brown box is the second version of the BitBoy Pocket Go otherwise known as the BitBoy Pocket Go V2 or more simply the Pocket Go V2 This is an interesting retro gaming system that has got a 3.5 inch IPS display and apparently the display is 320 by 240 pixels but it is apparently 60 Hz, which is quite impressive for a retro gaming console. So it's got dual micro SD card slots down at the bottom, but it also has 32 gigabytes storage inside. You can see the kind of SNES inspired colored buttons uh, in the front, Y, X, B and A, but it's also got L1, R1, L2 and R2. So that's really good if you're playing PS1 games, but it's great if you're playing SNES games, Game Boy Advance games and all that as well. Just to quickly go over some of the other specifications here, it's got a dual core 64 bit 1 gigahertz processor, it's got 512 megabytes of DDR2 RAM, it's got a Type C charging cable, and it's got two, a 2000 milliamp built in battery. So you see some other specs here as well, telling you all the different video and audio uh, playback formats, and it can be used as an ebook reader. But let's be honest, who is going to be using this to play videos and read ebooks? This is a gaming console, that's what we're going to be using it for. So in this video I just want to unbox it, I want to show you the console and I want to give you my first impressions of it. So let's get this open. Let's see what this is all about. So this is the box, quite funky actually, quite nice, I like that. So on the box we've got Pocket Go, quite a nice display. Uh, it's saying it's the new Pocket Go, so that you know it's not the original. USB Type-C cable, instruction manual, and you can see there it supports an external micro SD card. Headphones, save games, battery life is three. Uh, I was going to say 3.4 hours, it's 3 to 4 hours. 3.5 inch IPS screen, full screen original resolution display, screen brightness adjustment, 2000 milliamp battery, plays PS1, SNES, Game Boy Advance, Mega Drive, Sega Master System, PC Engine, Nintendo Entertainment System, Game Boy Color, Game Boy, Neo Geo, and MAME. So let's, you know, to summarize that, pretty much every game up to kind of the mid 90s. I like the presentation though, it's quite nice. So, get the box open. Spin it around. And here we go. I like the presentation. So this is it. This is the Pocket Go. And first impressions are that this is really nice. This is very, very nice. It's a lot smaller than I thought it would be. Which I know sounds stupid because I knew the dimensions beforehand, but until you pick it up in your hand and you can see how light it is. Um, yeah. Looks really good. So just to you can see this uh, display just before we go on, I just want to quickly see what else is in the box. The presentation here is very similar to opening a new phone. Okay, let's just wiggle this out and we'll see what's there. So we've got basic uh, functionalities there, how to power it on, etc. We've got the Type-C cable, which actually looks quite good. The cable, you know, it doesn't seem too cheap. It seems okay. And I'll open that up. I'm guessing it's going to be about one meter long. That's what most cables are, but we'll see just now. So my guess, comparing it to the size of my table, yeah, that's about a meter long. That's about a standard one meter cable. Um, so we've got uh, other, I think that's just button replacements or something we've got there. I'm not sure, I'll check that later. I think that's what it is. Um, and we've got a micro SD card reader, which is useful. You've got important instructions. It says charge the unit for about two to three hours to ensure it has enough power. Keep pressing the power button for two to three seconds until you see the booting logo. If the device can't boot in, just take the battery out with the micro SD card and TF1 slot. If any problems, contact us. So I'll get this up to the screen and we'll do the best part. Ho ho ho! That's always fun, isn't it? That display looks really, really nice. Now, earlier on I was saying 32 gigabytes of storage. I was taking that information from the website, but you can see there is a micro SD card in here already. And if I take that out, 
you will see it is 32 gigabytes. So that is where the firmware is stored and it's also where some games can be stored as well. But you've got that second slot if you want to store more games. Just clicks back in. Um, this looks like the battery compartment at the back. I'll get this open. So this is the battery BM20 and you can see they are 3.7 volts. It is a Sony battery produced in 2019 and it has a capacity of 2000 milliamps. Now the good thing about this is that if your battery burns out, if you use it too much with the capacity health drops, you can simply replace the battery. That's not something you can do with smartphones, tablets and increasingly laptops. But that's good to know from a, a future proofing point of view, if your battery ever dies, if it ever gets to the point where you're not getting three to four hours of battery, you're getting like an hour, then you can simply order a battery replacement for like 10 bucks or something and then you're kind of good to go, you're back to normal. I'll just put this back on, fairly easy. Um, just with regards to these buttons again, these buttons look like they can simply replace these ones. So you could perhaps replace the European SNES colours here for these kind of, well I guess it's burgundy and black if you want. You can mix up the colours if you want or maybe just keep them as replacements in case you break your buttons. This one here though, this, does, this isn't a replacement, this looks like it's like a, maybe if you just want a little bit extra grip, you put it onto the top. So if you want a, a larger kind of thumbstick, you can put that one on top. Obviously I need to do a better job doing that, but you can see that I'm, I've just put it on top there and it's given me a larger area there to control with the thumbstick. Okay, let's take a look around. I'll zoom in and we can, oh, zoom in the wrong way. Let's zoom in and we'll have a look around the console. So you've got your D-pad, You've got your analog stick, Pocket Go, doesn't say V2, it just says Pocket Go, YXBA. You've got three buttons here, select start, and the other one, as you can see here, is menu. So it doesn't say menu, but that button there is menu. And um, you've got your speaker there, it looks like a mic port there as well. Down at the bottom, you've got two uh, micro SD card slots, you've got a reset button, and at the top, you've got your um, L1 and L2 and then R2 and R1 buttons and then you've got power, Type-C charging port, your headphone jack and then you've got volume. So again, D-pad, thumbstick, you've got your main buttons there, menu, select start, storage, reset button and at the top you've got your L2, L1, R2, R1, uh, power, Type-C charging, headphone jack, volume very very light that's the one thing i would say about this very very light now if i push the power button so the pocket go did indeed load up but there wasn't much battery life in the system when i first loaded it so i decided to charge it up now it has a full battery but during that time when it was charging i took the opportunity to play around with it i played some games i tested some emulators and i was just trying to familiarize myself with how it works and how to navigate around i also wanted to make sure of how the firmware works because before I bought this I just assumed there was some sort of internal storage in here and it's kind of misleading on the website it makes you think that there is 32 gigabytes of storage inside here but there is not there's two micro SD card slots because the first one is being used for the firmware and I want to demonstrate that just by attempting to power it on but I know it will not it will not power on when the micro SD card is out. So this micro SD card has the firmware but it's also got some ROMs. Now what I would say to anyone who buys this is that you can, if you lose this, you can find a copy of the firmware somewhere online. You can get a backup of it but I think it's prudent that when you buy this take a copy of it somewhere in your laptop, your hard drive and just store it somewhere online, even in Dropbox or something and just make sure you've got a copy of it so that if anything happens or if the, the micro SD card gets corrupted, you've got the original firmware and you can load your Pocket Go back up. So you just pop it back in, I showed you this earlier, but you pop it back in. But one thing to note is when you pop it back in, because I had it out there, it won't just switch on. So what you need to do is reset it by taking the battery 
out and then put it back in. And I want to show you from this angle is that when you put it back in, it will just instantly load up like that. There you go. That's it loading up. And then I can put the back on. So it will just instantly come back on when the battery is put in, into place. Yeah, clicks back in. And then it will load back up. Well, what I want to quickly do though is turn it off and then I'll show you turning back on again. And the reason is, if you remember previously when that micro SD card was not in, it would not switch on. Now that the micro SD card is back in, i.e. the firmware, it will load up as normal. And you can see the green light down the bottom. When it's charging, you will get a funky little red light, like so. So you saw you saw it loading before. You've got an idea of what uh, what the firmware looks like. It's quite quite similar to what you would see in a lot of other kind of retro gaming setups. Um, now this is not see that time it took to load up there. It normally loads a little bit quicker. I'm not sure why it did that. Oh well. Okay, so. There's four different sections, four different categories at the top of the page. And if I zoom in a little bit, here we go, zoom in. Should be able to see that a little bit better. So you've got applications, emulators, games, and settings. And it's fairly easy to get around. Just use the D-pad. You can use the thumbstick as well. And you usually use A, the red button, to go forward. And you use the start button to go back to the main menu. So for example, I can go to about here and then just exit using start system info push start to exit I think it's actually, yeah you can see a total RAM for applications here you've got the processor and different things um, the other thing to note here is again the, the you've got the battery there, you've got the time which I haven't set and then you've got the micro SD card so you've got the 28 gigabytes of 32 but it's seeing 11.4 out of 28 and the reason is as I kind of briefly mentioned there there's actually a lot of ROMs in this and that's something that surprised me that if you go into like say Pico Drive you look at the Mega Drive games you can see that there's actually games there's games built into this that was a big surprise to me and it was one of the things I wanted to test because well it really was surprising because there is a games category or section and it's like copyright freeware games. You've got Free Doom, you've got Minesweeper, you've got basically crappy freeware games. And there's a whole category there. Now, what normally happens when you buy a retro gaming system is that you get all of these free games, but then you need to go and get the ROMs yourself. Understandably, because of copyright, because the company does not want to get sued. For whatever reason, I got ROMs. So. Okay, I'll get back to that in a second, but that's why that storage says 11.4 out of 28 and it doesn't show that the firmware is only taking up like 100 megabytes or even less than that. It could be like 10 meg or something. So, um, settings, you've got about G menu 2x. There's network, you can do like F FTP, etc. Um, you can change the skin. Again, I'm just going back with the start button. And you've got wallpaper, you've got power off and reboot, etc. Under applications, there's a clock, terminal. I mean... I'm sure there are situations where these things are handy. Um, Explorer is probably the, one of the most useful things to have. Uh, you can see in the micro SD card, ROMs, MP4, MP3, apps, ROMs. So there's all the ROMs that are there. You can do this. File Explorer is definitely one of the most useful ones. Um, yeah, there's different things here. Input tester, different things. But where you'll be going most of the time is emulators. Emulators, that's where you'll be going. And you can see there's a, a few different options here. You've got uh, one for MAME, there's one, two, one's there for Game Boys, Game Boy and Game Boy Color. You've got FBA, FCU, I don't know how you pronounce that, Genesis Plus. Um, that looks like a PlayStation one. You'll get Pocket SNES. There's a lot of different ones there, and I've got no doubt that you can add your own emulators. No doubt about it, you can add your own. Um, if you have played any kind of retro gaming system before, I'm sure you are familiar with most of these. You've, you've came across Pico Drive and Pocket SNES and SNES 9X, etc. Now, as far as loading ROMs, it's, it's very simple. You just put it into your micro SD card, or you can load it to the second one and just load it from that second micro SD card fairly simple and because all the emulators are built in already most of the ones unless you want one that's not built in I would say that 
a lot of people that buy this are just happy with the emulators that are there. Um, you're you're pretty much good to go, at least at the beginning. You're good to go before you drop some ROMs in. Um, what I'll do is just load up Sonic. Now, what I will say is that I've not spent a lot of time with this yet. This, I guess, is a first impressions video. But I will say that I do like the buttons. They're quite clicky. They're quite quite nice. Um, I don't like the position of the L2... Oh, right, I'm, I'm overwriting a save here. Um, I don't like the positions of the, the L2 and R2. They're kind of out of the way, really. I'm doing the saving again. Um, but, you know, that's to be... You know, that's to be expected, really, because, you know, obviously in the PlayStation 1 you had the buttons behind each other. Here you've just got a really thin... Um, a really thin uh, wedge of buttons here at the top. But you can reach them without... You know, I can click these without um, pushing the L1 and R1. I keep saving. I've probably got about 50 save states now. Now, it's hard to show this, but the screen does look fantastic here. It looks really, really nice. Um, you maybe see a little bit better there. When I bring it closer to the camera. On my display, it looks so much better. Um, possibly because I'm filming at 30 hertz and this is playing at 60 hertz. And if I do a follow-up video to this, which I will, I will probably do it in 60 frames per second so that you can maybe see that a little bit better. Maybe it'll show you better. But yeah, plays well. Now, what you can do when you're playing the game is push the menu button and, okay, that's when it's select. Now, I will say that as well, you know, I've, I've played a lot of emulated consoles, it'll compare a few in a, in a second, but the, the buttons to actually go to the main menu can all normally be changed. It, it depends on the emulator, but you can see here there's um, configure controls and you've got six button control and you've got, you know, the button that you use for saving the state, etc. The, the way that you that you save a state and the way that you load games and the way that you do everything within the emulator is different for each emulator. But they've obviously set it up to be optimised for this handheld. But you can just exit like that. But if, if for any reason, and anyone who's played any kind of retro gaming will know this, but if for any reason you get stuck in a game, just either hit the reset button, that will take you back to the main menu like, like this. I'll push it just now actually. This will just take you back, reset the, uh, the console. If that doesn't work, then you go back to taking the battery out. But you shouldn't have to do that. You should be able to get out through the menu and you should be able to go out via the reset button. So one of the interesting things about this as well is that it can play um, PlayStation 1 games. And you see I was testing Harry Potter there. And um, you've got NBA Live, you've got Street Fighter 03, you've got Tekken 3, Tomb Raider. World Soccer, put on um, Castlevania. So, the, the interesting thing is, I think about this, is that I could probably take out the, um, you know, any micro SD card I'd put into something else. Like I could copy, is it in, have I got this in here already? Yes. So there's the Easy Flash with my Game Boy Micro, and I could just copy and paste all of the ROMs from there into a micro SD card put it in here and then just simply select the ROMs. So if you do have an existing retro gaming handheld, you should just be able to copy and paste your ROMs from your computer, from another micro SD card. It should be relatively simple to do that. So you can maybe see the screen a little bit better there. It looks better there, doesn't it? When it's directly on, it kind of flickers a little bit. There we go. Um, and again, th th this this video is not for playing games. I'm not trying to just play games throughout this video. It's really just to show you what this console can do. Um, what I would say is as well is like, I, I do think the buttons are quite n nice. It does feel like a, a nice little handheld. It does feel kind of light compared to, you know, a Game Boy. Uh, like an official Nintendo DS or something like that. It's certainly a lot lighter, which for many of you might be a good thing. But yeah, I mean, I'm now playing... 
Castlevania. PlayStation version on PlayStation 1 version on a handheld. And the audio sounds really good. It's obviously hard for me to, to show that in the video, but the audio seems okay. Um, if you wanted better audio, you know, go for the headphone jack, but it's okay. It's, it's, it's a little tinny, but normally are with re retro gaming systems like this. So, select, let's go back to the main menu. So, I've not done it with this emulator. I think the last time I just reset. There will be a way or a button combination. No, I've not learned it yet. So, I'm going to use the reset button to go back to the main menu. So, what I would say overall, as far as the experience of navigating it all, playing around with it all, you know, just generally using the handheld, it's quite a nice experience, actually. You know what I mean? There's, it's... You know, once you, you there's nothing really to set up. You go into you can go into settings and use the applications and all that if you want. But I I would expect that 99% of people who buy this will simply go to emulators and then play their games. And the only thing you really need to do is put your games in this micro SD card or another one and put it in there. But there is one provided, so you can you know just go in and add it to the, uh, the ones that are there. Um, just loading games and all that. It, it's a very easy experience. Um, the SNES, Killer Instinct, F Zero. They've actually picked a good selection of games for each console, so that is quite that is quite good. Okay, let's not dwell on that too much. What I want to quickly do before I summarise my thoughts at the end is zoom out a little bit to my desk, and we can have a little quick comparison. These are some other handhelds that I've got. These are, I think, all of the handhelds I've got at the moment. My Nintendo Switch is not here. Um. I just want to quickly compare them to some other options, so if I, I'll go down a little bit more. So this is my Sony PSP, right? I would say that the Sony PSP is probably my my best retro gaming handheld. I realise that a lot of people use the 3DS for retro gaming. I've got the homebrew on it, I can do it, I can play retro games on the 3DS, but I, I just haven't chosen to do so. Um, more because I've I've already got other systems that do it, and I always found these ones to be more portable. The lighter the 3DS is quite a heavy handheld. It really is. Um, the Game Boy Micro is one of my favourite consoles ever. Handhelds. It's just because it's so small. But if you're playing for hours and hours and hours, then obviously this is uh, well, for starters it's upside down. But uh, if you're playing for hours and hours, this is obviously not the most enjoyable experience. But just for a quick 20 minute, you know, you're on the bus, you're on the train, that kind of thing, this is fantastic. But as far as a, a pure retro gaming system, I still love my PSP Go. It's just fantastic. And, you know, I've got PlayStation games on it, I've got SNES games, I've got Mega Drive games on it. It's very light. Uh, the battery's got good charge in it as well. But when you compare both of these, you can see that, you know, they're not, a, there's not a huge difference in size. You know, it's, not massive. The PSP Go is definitely smaller, but um, I, I, I would argue that the controls are better in the Pocket Go because this was always, you know, you always had a little bit of a sacrifice with the PSP Go that your your hands were kind of cramped down the bottom. So I did enjoy playing games on this, but this D-pad sucks. This th thumbstick, it's not great, really. Um, you can play games on this. It is a good little handheld, but just the position of the buttons isn't amazing. This is more like a traditional traditional Game Boy Advance. And obviously the SP was a kind of miniaturized version of the, the Game Boy Advance. But I would say this is based on the original Game Boy Advance. And I think they've went for a, a nice form factor. I really do think they went for a nice form factor. It's, it's, it's much lighter than the DS and the 3DS. It's got a nice display. The buttons are quite clicky. Kind of feel cheap a little bit, if I'm honest. They do feel a little bit cheap. Um, but it looks like you can replace them as well. And if I zoom down, this is something I didn't show you earlier, but you can obviously screw, unscrew, you know, just take these screws out here and I assume that's how you actually get these buttons out. There's some uh, notes about the buttons at the top there as well. You can see R2 plus minus for the volume headphone, headphone jack. Yeah, just four screws, fairly easy to get that open. What I would like to do at this point is summarise my initial thoughts on the BitBoy Pocket Go V2. 
And I do suggest that these are my initial thoughts because I've not spent a huge amount of time with this handheld yet. And I do think it takes a few months to really appreciate how a handheld works and you know, where there's anything you don't like, where there's anything that you do like. It takes months to appreciate whether the battery life does live up to expectations. And it does take time to appreciate whether there's any problems with, well, with the buttons, with the D-pad or with the thumbstick. There are many handhelds that over time, you know, certain parts of the hardware have become less responsive. But so far, so good. Now, as far as games go, as far as compatibility goes, I've not had any problems. But that should not be a surprise. I've only used the provided emulators and the provided ROMs and everything works really, really well. It works smoothly, no problems, and that's really, really impressive, especially for the Sony PS1. I just assumed that certain games would have a little bit of stutter, but this thing just blows the Sony PS1 out of the park. I've not had any problems with that. Now, down the line, what I would like to do is install more ROMs, and there's always certain problems with certain games, and you'll be aware of that, like Pokemon, etc., that just never played well with emulators. What I would say about that is that most of the time that is not always, you know, it's not always a hardware issue. Most of the time that tends to be an emulator issue or an emulator and game compatibility issue rather than a hardware problem. But I do think that if you do have any problems with games, it will be an emulator issue. And, you know, this has got a dual core CPU. It's got 512 megabytes of RAM. It can handle the Sony PS1 games. It can handle them really well. So I suspect it can handle the Saturn really well. And who knows, maybe I could push this even f further and move, you know, to even newer, uh, you know, generations and perhaps try out some other emulators that work well on this handheld. These are all things that I need to test over time. So, yes, these are things I'll test in the future. But right now, let's summarise my thoughts. Well, I would say that the buttons are really nice. They do feel a little bit cheap. I'm not going to lie to you. They don't feel as good as a Nintendo handheld, like a Game Boy or a DS or anything like that. You know, they're nice and responsive and they're clicky and you enjoy the games, you know, you enjoy playing games in this. So I think the buttons are nice. Overall, it does kind of feel cheap compared to something like a 3DS, but, you know, you're paying a lot less as well. One thing I do like about it, though, is its weight. This is really, really light. And, you know, if I'm going traveling and I'm going on a train or flying, if I've already got a tablet and a laptop in my bag, if I'm going to load up some ROMs onto one of these systems, I'd probably gravitate towards the Pocket Go just because it's lighter. And I also think as well, it's a more pleasurable experience playing this, not only because it's lighter, but the, the display is gorgeous. I'm not sure if this is coming through in this video, but this display looks absolutely fantastic and it really does make playing games on this a lot of fun. It's a really good size as well. I think 3.5 inches seems to be a sweet spot for a handheld. You know, it's not as small as the Game Boy Micro. Uh, it might not be as large as some other handhelds out there, such as the Switch, etc. But it's just, it's, it's a really nice feel in the hand. It's a good size. It's the, it feels like the right size. So I think the button positions are all good. Uh, I think the screen looks great. The volume, it's okay. I mean, I always think that these kind of things always seem a little bit tinny, but it, it seems quite good. I don't think there's any problems there. Um, the way that this overall works, you know, the, the way with the firmware and all that, it's a little bit quirky, really. I would have preferred if the firmware was in the system. I think it's just prudent to, to back that up, but I don't think it's a deal breaker. There's two micro SD card slots. If you want, you can just keep the default one there and don't touch it, and you can put your ROMs and all that in this one. It's up to you. You've got a bit of flexibility there with how you work it, but it's just the way this works. Um, I'll just show you PS1 game. Um, oh, Mega Man. That's what I was playing briefly there. Um, yeah, I just, I just, it, it, it is quite an enjoyable little handheld. And this is the thing. This is not a perfect handheld. The display is probably as close to perfect you get in a handheld like this, I would say. But it's hard to complain. This retails at between 70 and 80 bucks. And the overall package is fantastic for that price. You've got decent speakers. You've got a great display. You've got, you know, a nice little, nice little handheld, good size, good weight, decent buttons, a lot of different configuration. 
buttons. You've got plenty of emulators. You've got plenty of ROMs that are packaged there right away, which is good for anyone who's not really, you know, played games on an emulated handheld before. It, get, it gives you a head start. You don't have to, you know, go in there blind and only play those freeware games. So I think the overall package is great. And I don't think I've really unlocked all the possibilities of, of this yet. I think there's going to be a lot of tips and tricks that I'll learn in the future and it will help me get more out of this. So I need to look more into that. I need to, you know, look into updates and emulators that aren't currently here. But overall, I think for the price, this is a great little handheld. It really is, it is something I'm impressed with, I must say. And I'm not going to say it's the, the perfect handheld for everyone because I always do say to people that if you want a handheld, you should start looking at some of the older Sony and Nintendo ones as well because you get good value for them second hand. But for a new handheld... This is a very attractive option because of its compatibility with so many different platforms, because of its size, because of its weight, and because of its price. So I'm looking forward to learning more about this. I'm looking forward to doing a follow-up video to this in the future. Hopefully I will know more about it then. But in the meantime, thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will speak to you all in the next one. Take care.